All right, folks, thanks again. Tonight, Tech of Colors, we're having another session. And tonight's session, um, which of course I'm, I'm sure you guys can see it in the address bar, but tonight's session is, um, is going to be talking about Fortinet routing and switching. I'm going to try to fit this under, you know, under an hour, what have you, but I really want to go into detail of how it is and how it's going to work. Okay. So one of the main things that I like about Fortinet is that um, they're really a bridge between routing and switching and going um, and combining that with security, right? And the fundamentals of routing and switching in with um, firewalling, right, go hand in hand when learning about um, when learning about Fortinet and learning about cybersecurity, what have you. And so I just wanted to have this session just to, again, um, before we jump into, and we're still on the infrastructure part of the, um, as far as studying for the exam, I want to go and go ahead and get, create you guys a bridge between routing and switching and firewalling and see how all that meshes together. And this is going to go ahead and cover what we learned about layer two, layer three from a route and switch standpoint, but also layer two and layer three from a FortiGate standpoint, right? And so let's go ahead and, and catch that. So let's talk about this big topology that we have, right? So we have a topology, right? We're going to call this, this is one campus, right? Building A is on the left and building um, and building B is on the right, right? And so, you know, the buildings are, are so far from each other, right? So that we have to go ahead and get an ISP to make sure that they, um, they go ahead and uh, make sure they um, transfer our traffic from one building to another, right? Um, but our goal here, right? What is our big goal? We want to make sure that um, people that are in, you know, building one, can go ahead and get to building uh, building three. That's what we're going to call it, right? Under under lab forty eight three, right? But we don't we don't want the packet to change, right? We want the traffic to still stay. You know, the source and the destination is going to be the same, right? And that's the biggest thing with anything as far as firewalling is the source and the destination, what you're allowing and what you're not allowing. Okay, so we're going to start off with this, right? Just to give you guys a lay of the land and the topology, we're going to look at some packet captures and everything, right? Um, because of course this is things that of course network engineers, cybersecurity analysts, what have you, everybody has to know before we jump into who's hacking, who, who's doing this, who's a, you know, who's an imminent threat or what have you, we need to know routing and switching. Okay. So I told you guys what we're trying to achieve, right? We're trying to get to this from the source, you know, um, the source being, you know, lab 48.1 in that network, right? The 10.10.10.10.0 network and trying to get to the destination. 172.16.1.0 slash 24 and vice versa, right? Okay, so we got two PCs. We got two test PCs, PC8 and PC9, right? And they're on the, this network. They're on. They're each on each other's network, each other's land, right? And then the cream of the crop of this lab is we have the 40 gates, right? We have, you know, the company site, right? Let's call this um, Enosha Services. Um, enterprise right they have one forty gate at headquarters and one forty gate at um at the building three location okay but it has to go through the isp so of course you guys see there's two isp routers of course there's cisco routers um one on the left and one on the right okay um and you see their subnet okay so it's a public address right with the isp right and so the funny thing is right because whenever we have the call right we had the call with the ISP, and again, this is just about the scenario. We had the call with the ISP, and we said, hey, we want to make sure that, you know, these buildings can talk with each other. They're sharing routes with each other. I can see how to get to XYZ, and, and my other building knows how to get to XYZ via a routing protocol, okay? And all a routing protocol is, is it's an easier way to go ahead and share how to get where between routers. That's it. I'm not going to make it complex. I'm not going to shoot you guys out big words. Okay. So this, the, you know, the caveat of this lab is the middle 40 gate. Okay. It's, you know, the ISP 40 gate too. Right. And so what we're trying to accomplish and see, you know, if we're talking about the OSI, OSI model and, and layer two, layer three, or what have you, layer three is the funny part because if it's a layer three device, like a router, like a firewall, each interface is a layer three boundary. What does that mean? When you go from one interface, right, on a layer three device 
to another, right? Oh, no problem, no problem. I just got your message, no problem. My pleasure, uh, you know, I don't mind sending out the invite. But um, so back to what I was saying, right? So the funny thing about a layer three device, right? I want everybody to remember this. Um, again, this is being recorded, but you know, each interface is a layer three boundary, okay? So if I'm looking at, let me get my handy dandy uh, pencil, right? If I'm looking at port three, gigabit zero slash zero, and that right there, gigabit zero slash one, all of these are layer three boundaries, right? So the network for this network, since they connect to each other, they're within the same boundary or the same broadcast domain, as they would say, right? In the uh, network world, right? But as soon as I go over here, right? I go ahead and switch over to this side and I go over here, this is another boundary. This is another network. They're not in the same network, okay? So just keep that in mind whenever you're learning. And I know sometimes, um, you know, you're reading a book, read, especially the Cisco book or the Fortinet book, it may be big words that may confuse people. It, trust me, it happened to me. Just, I just want you guys to make it make sense. Every interface on a layer three device, whether that be a firewall or a um, router, it's a boundary. So it's going to be a whole different broadcast from there. Okay. So keep that in mind, right? So let's go back to our goal. We want to make sure, you know, we can see how to get from, you know, building one to building three. Okay. And we want these buildings to share routes with each other. Okay. So with that being said, I'm sure you guys can see the network, right? And let's take a look right here right and we're still on layer three you see that this network right there's no other networks between it it's just this and i know you guys are going to ask you're going to probably ask and think in your mind dave you just said you just said that the layer three boundary right is is a broadcast domain right so it can't extend past interfaces right and so here's the funny thing to where on the fortinet on the fortigate we're going to combine Layer, layer three and layer two together, okay? So at the end of this lab, we're gonna see how ISP router four and, and ISP router five can go ahead and be, be on the same broadcast domain, okay? So let's go ahead and do this, right? Let's start off first. Where is it? Where's my eraser? There we go, all right, cool. Let me shut all this down, perfect, all right. So I already built up the lab a little bit, right? set IP addresses and what have you. We're gonna go ahead and start tracking the traffic, right? First, we're gonna go ahead and start at layer one, start at the end user, start at test PC. We're gonna go ahead and let me bring this over here. And here's PC eight, right? This is, this is a PC I have at building one. I'm gonna go ahead and first, right? For me to be able to start testing and see if I can ping PC nine, I need a source and a destination. And both sides need a MAC address for at layer two, and they need an IP address at layer three. Let me go ahead and try to get a IP address. And the DHCP server in this sense is the FortiGate. That's one of the functions that a FortiGate or a layer three device can do. It can act as a DHCP server. So let's go ahead and do that. So what's happening now, of course, the PC is sending out a broadcast message, okay? Um, sending out a broadcast and saying, uh, hey, where's my DHCP server? The FortiGate is gonna respond, being the DHCP server or any layer three device that's acting as a DHCP server, say, hey, I'm a DHCP server, I handle your DHCP request. But we'll have another session on that. But we see that, cool, we have a IP address now, right? We know our gateway, which of course is the FortiGate layer three interface for this broadcast domain, right? And just for it to make sense, this is the broadcast domain, right? So this is a port two's interface is its whole broadcast domain, all right? Hope that makes sense, guys, still stick with me. All right, so we have a broadcast domain. Let's go ahead and do some testing, right? Let's test layer one, layer two, layer three, right? Of course, the switch, which operates at layer two, of course, if you have a certain type of switch, a multi-layer switch, right? It can do layer two and layer three functions, but just for this lab, it's just gonna be doing layer two. So let's go ahead and try to see if we can ping our gateway, which is dot 254. That's gonna confirm layer one, layer two, and layer three, and this is what we wanna do. So let's go ahead and ping that. Perfect, right? So what this is telling us, and let's go ahead and read this out, um, and you guys are probably gonna have to know this for the future. 
right? 84 bytes from, we're getting 84 bytes from our destination that we were trying to pick, right? 10.10.10.254. It tells us the, of course, the ICMP type, of course, and, and the, the sequence number, because it's going to send about five of them. The TTL, which is the time to live, right? And of course, the time it took to get to that destination, all right? So it works, right? But let's go ahead and, and see if we can go ahead and test pinging the IC router, right? IC router's interface um, address on gigabit zero slash zero is dot two, right? In that 11.2.3.0 slash 30 network. So let's go ahead and try to ping it. Essentially, right? The, for, the FortiGate being a uh, router, right? In a sense that has, you know, uh, firewall capabilities, I should be able to ping it, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Doesn't look the same as before, right? Right? And so this error code is telling me it's not going through. Why? Well, I'll tell you, right? The thing about firewalling and stuff like that, Again, it is a router, but the other, the other piece of it is it, it mitigates traffic. It says who's allowed to go to where and who's not allowed to go to where, right? That's the other piece of, that's what makes it different from being a router or a switch or what have you, right? They go ahead and mitigate who's allowed in and who's allowed out, okay? So for us to be able to go ahead and communicate with this network to be able to go out, there's a couple of things we need to consider, right? We need to go ahead and allow that traffic, but we also need to make sure we have a um, route towards it, right? So that from a layer three standpoint, whenever the FortiGate, which is of course also a router, it gets that information, it says, hey, let me look up in my routing table, right? Every layer three device is gonna have that. Let me look at my routing table and see if I know how to get there, right? So let's go ahead and take a look, let's log into the FortiGate. Let's go ahead. Open up a new browser. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and log in. I gave it an address of um, 192.168.1.101. And this is just so that my local computer can go ahead and connect to the lab. Okay. And of course, if I could type right, sorry, y'all, it's been a long day. Let's go ahead. Whoops. Yeah, I put commas everywhere. Jesus, lucky mistake. Days in a long day. All right. Let's see what we can do. Whoops. Let's do some troubleshooting. You know, I like that. All right. Hey. Yeah. one. Cool. Things are working. There we go. sure that I did enable it on the interface. There we go. Let's go ahead and log in. Go ahead and check the interface. Guys, I'll take notes on this for now, but of course you guys will. I'm making sure to see that I allow that I have HTTPS running. Perfect. All right, so that's running. That's good to go. Let's go ahead and check it. Let me do this. Yeah. There we go. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, so let's log in. Log into. And again, we're going to go ahead and check to see if we're allowing traffic to go from port two, one broadcast domain, to another, to port three, right? Because we want to go ahead, we want to make sure that PCA can, can ping 
the ISP routers that they gave us for our site. Okay. Let's go ahead, log on in. Okay, so we're in the FortiGate, and I want to go ahead and check interfaces. Perfect. All right, so everything looks exactly how we saw it in topology. We have our um, LAN broadcast domain. We have our um, local area network, right? It's already given out one address, so that looks fine. All right, and we have our WAN, right? So 11.2.3.1, right? Perfect, perfect. So that's assigned to port three. And of course, since the slash 30, the other address that's only possible is a dot two. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's see if we're seeing anything, right? Let's do a little bit of, you know, troubleshooting, take a look at everything and see why those pings aren't working, right? Hmm. So we already see some denies, right? And we'll talk about ACLs in a second. But for right now, I want to get things, um, I want to get things to show you guys how it how it looks and why it gets denied, right? So let's go ahead, let's pull up PC8 again, okay? Let's go ahead and issue those pings again, because now I'm logging that traffic, all right? So now that I'm logging, let's go ahead and take a look at the forwarding traffic log and see if I'm seeing anything, okay? So perfect, right? We see it, and let's take a look at it a little bit further, right? And you guys, right, whether you guys are network engineers, whether you guys are just straight up cybersecurity people, you'll have to know how to look at this and be able to decipher what's happening here, right? So tell me the time, right? Nine seconds ago, 11 seconds ago, depending on what was um, configured, what's the time going or what have you on the, on the uh, firewall, right? It's telling me my source, right? The dot 100, right? So of course, any device that will tell you, it'll try to guess what device it is based on the OUI. That's not important, right? In this case, right? In our destination, right? 11.2.3.2. Okay. And so the result is it denied, right? It, it denied that traffic from getting there. And it's a policy violation. Again, a firewall, right? It's a router, right? But it's, it's going to go ahead. Its job, its primary job is to mitigate how traffic goes from here to there, right? And that's just an explanation at a high level. Just wanted to make sense to you guys. So we see traffic is coming from land two. Go back to the topology. Okay, port two, right? It's coming from port two and it's trying to get to port three and it's denying it. Okay? It denied because it, it went ahead and matched with a policy that's denying all traffic, right? And so go back to the policy, right? And let's go ahead and investigate that a little bit, right? We see the policy that says, from any, right, to any, right? Source all, destination all, doesn't matter, right? I want you to deny it, right? Period, right? And let's take a step back in and talk about ACLs. And we'll talk deeper into it in later sessions, but a little quick history lesson on ACLs. Access control list, right? You know, the acronym for ACLs, right? They're meant to go ahead and, and of course you'll see them on routers, see them on some multi-layer switches, right? It is on some switches. You can do, um, you know, do uh, what they call macros, right, at layer two. But what an ACL is going to do, it's, it's basically a lot, you know, mitigating who has access, you know, from one port to another, one network to another, what have you, right? And so at every access list, no matter what it is, at the bottom of every access list, there's always an implicit deny, meaning if it doesn't match any other, any, of, any other of my entries in this list, I'm gonna go ahead and deny it, right? So if Dre, if Daniel, if Kiera didn't say, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and allow this traffic, it's gonna hit that last rule. That's always gonna be at the bottom of it. And so this is why, of course, when you guys start playing with it, and of course, in you guys' day-to-day um, -day working environment, you guys will, you know, you guys will encounter, oh, this traffic is not getting through because you didn't set a specific rule for it to allow that traffic or to deny that traffic, okay? So at the end of every access control list, there's always gonna be an implicit deny. And in this case, right, this, you know, this firewall, of course, has an implicit deny, okay? So that's why it's getting hit. So for my traffic, we go back to the topology, right? If we want PC8 to talk to, you know, the ISP router for our first test, because ultimately we want it to get to PC9. 
if we want to allow traffic to get out there, we need to go ahead and say, hey, allow traffic from port two to port three. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and build a, what they call an access control entry. So let's go ahead and put an entry in there and say, we're going to allow this traffic coming from the land to the wind, right? So basically inside out, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and call it northbound, right? All right, and there's no specific, you know, way to call a policy. You can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it northbound, all right? And the source is going to be off, right? Because I'm not going to be too, too specific. The goal now is just I want traffic to flow from my land out to the world, okay? So from port two to port three, I'm allowing all. Source is all. My destination is all. Schedule is always. We can not schedule, you know, how this policy works based on time, but we're not going to do that now. Right, plenty of things you can do on a firewall, which is why it's a you know, of course, why they call it a next generation firewall, and it's a little bit powerful than ACL. Right, but let's keep going. Right, um, inspection mode, you know, between flow base and proxy base, we'll talk about that at the later session. Right, at a later session, what have you, with this NSC4 journey. Right, firewall and network options. Right, I'm going to go ahead and allow that. What does that mean? Right, so you know, it's going to do network address translation. So basically, whenever any traffic, right, whenever I allow this policy, any traffic that's leaving this local area network here, the 10.10.10.0 network, whenever it leaves here, it's going to use the IP address of port three. It's going to translate to that, right? And it's going to go ahead, and I have the option to use several types of network address translation or NAT on this policy. I can say, hey, use the outgoing interface or i can use a pool of ip addresses to say hey for traffic that's leaving here you can use this address but there's a whole pool i can have a pool of 10 addresses 15 addresses what have you but which more efficient i can go ahead and just use the outgoing interface address which is ports port three's address and what the fortigate will do or a router will do will keep track of it by assigning it a port number as well an infernal port number which is just a random port number so that whenever that traffic comes back, hey, this came from port three. Cool. Go ahead and translate it back and send it back down. Okay. So we have this here. I'm going to go ahead and leave that. We're not going to talk about security profiles. We're not on that section now. We're just going to leave everything straight. We just want to go ahead and make sure we allow that traffic. Okay. We're going to go ahead and just log traffic for now so you guys can see it. We're going to go ahead and enable this policy. All right. So what do we expect to happen? All right. If we do pings again, it should work. Voila, right? So layer one, layer two, layer three works, right? But of course, this is the next generation firewall, right? It's not just gonna look at layer three, right? We're gonna look at port numbers, right? We're gonna look at um, layers four, layers five. We're gonna look at port numbers. We're gonna look at um, layer five, six, and seven. We're going to look at services, presentation layer. We're going to look at the application. Does it match up? Are we going to allow? We're going to allow all things, right? And this is what I did. And, and this is why, of course, Palo Alto, Fortigate, um, Cisco Firepower, they're called next generation firewalls because they're not like um, those, you know, those old school firewalls or stateless firewalls where they, they just focus on between layers one and layers four, right? So that's what's so great about you know um fortigate and what have you of course i like fortigate but you know next generation firewall for now so we allowed that traffic right we got traffic flowing so we need to do the same thing right on our other fortigate over here right for this network so we're going to go ahead and do the same thing we're going to log into that one and now that i think about it let's make sure that pc9 as an IP address to be able to do that for PC8. So let's do that because that's our test PC that's going to serve as our destination. Let's go ahead, try to get an IP address. And again, guys, just to re explain, our FortiGate, one of its functions that it can do, it can act as a DHCP server. Any layer three device, like a router and a multi layer switch um, that may be doing some layer three functions, can act like a DHCP server as well if you, if you program it. In this case, the FortiGate, that this interface specifically, port two, is acting as a DHCP server, handing out IP addresses. What we just saw is PC9 was able to get an IP address 
for this um, for this local area network 172.16.1.0 slash 24. Okay, so we're good. We're golden. Has a test. We're gonna test layer one through layer three. Go ahead and make sure that we can go ahead and ping our gateway. Cool. We got ping our gateway, and we're gonna do the same thing that we did on the other side. Can we ping our ISP router? Go ahead and do that. And that address on ISP router is a dot two. And what I expect is it shouldn't work because same thing as the other side, guys. Even though the FortiGate is a layer three device, right? It's going to do some firewalling. It's going to it's going to go ahead and say, "Am I allowing this traffic now?" Right? In my ACL, in my policy, right? Am I allowing traffic from this port to that port? If not, hey, sorry, you're getting hit with the implicit deny. Okay? So let's go ahead and fix this, right? So let's fix this in real time. Let's go ahead and watch it. Let me go ahead and just do a continuous ping. Okay? Do a continuous ping. And I'll see if I can do this here. There we go. And just temporarily. All right. So let's go ahead and log in. And I just want to show you guys. how quick, as soon as we apply that change, how quick it starts to act, okay? And I'll explain why it does that in a, in a future session. But, and we'll talk about stateful, you know, stateful firewalling and what have you, but let's go and make that change right there and there, okay? So we got our implicit deny. We talked about that, I don't, I don't need to be a broken record. Let's go ahead and create our northbound policy. Okay, from the land the WAN, right? We're going to allow all, right? We're not being too specific to all destinations. We're going to hit all. We're going to let NAT do its thing. We're going to allow, the action is going to be to allow this traffic, right? And we're going to just log it and enable this policy. Instantaneously. Okay? Instantaneously, we see all. Oh, perfect. You can go ahead and allow that traffic. Right? And we'll talk about that deeper, you know, in the infrastructure section once we move to firewalling, what have you, why that's the case. Because it's specific to firewalls and especially there's, it's specific to Fortinet to why that works, right? That you'll need for your NFC4, right? But again, this session is talking about um, Fortinet routing and switching, right? So perfect, right? We have our policies, we're able to ping um, and so now we should be able to from PC9 to ping the gateway, which of course we saw. We're able to ping the ISP's device and we're, we're golden, right? So all is good. So routing and switching from a LAN standpoint, right, is working, right? From layer one, layer two, layer three, going crossing, you know, layer three boundaries, that works, right? So what's the other thing that we said we wanted to achieve in this lab, right? Building one, which is on the left, building three, which is on the right, I need them to, of course, communicate routes between each other, right? And of course, the ISP router is going to go ahead and share routes because, again, we're using the ISP. Since the buildings are so far, we're using the, the ISP to go ahead and mitigate that traffic between one and another, right? You know, so this is, this is where, you know, things start to get tricky and you have to understand, um, you know, routing and switching to a point, right? So, like I told you guys, lay up your boundaries through and through. We see that, right? But the goal here is I want to, I want this, this whole net, the OSU broadcast domains, right? To be on the same network. I want them to be able to talk, right? And so what we talked about before is that a FortiGate has the ability to do layer two functions, right? To just go ahead and pass traffic you know, uh, from a layer two level. So the FortiGate can act as a switch, right? Even though I told you guys it is a router, right? It's, it's basically a router, right? It's a quote unquote NAT device, right? We can't, it can do some layer two, layer two functions to where you can sit it in, into a network and they'll do some layer two things, right? And so if our last session, if you watch it, they have this feature called a virtual wire pair, right? And what does that mean, right? 
The virtual wire pair means it bonds two interfaces together. And so what that does is traffic from one interface to another interface is bonded to each other, can only pass traffic through those two interfaces. And it's going to be at a layer two, uh, at a layer two level, not layer three. This virtual wire pair is not going to have any IP address assigned to it. It's just going to pass traffic through and through. So let's go ahead and give it a shot, right? So I'm going to go ahead and first, we're going to go ahead and test it, right? First, we're going to assign, you know, we're going to assign a IP address to gigabit zero slash one on ISP router four and IP address on ISP um, router uh, five, right? And we're going to put it, again, it's going to be in a slash 30, right? This is going to be, get a dot one, this is going to get a dot two, right? And we're going to go ahead and test it. So let's go ahead and go to four. Okay. So we're on four. Let's go ahead and log in. All right. I'm going to go, I'm going to go ahead and sign IP address. All right, and I'm said so I'm going to go ahead and give it a dot one. Perfect. Of course, I got to no shut it because the interface on the router is never um, by default automatically up. So now it's up. It's good. Perfect. Let's do the same thing. I'm going to assign a dot two to IC router five. Perfect. I bring that over here. Perfect. So, there we go. Can't really see that. Let me. There we go. All right. So, all right. So let's get into the interface. What is it? Let me just verify. Zero slash one. Perf. Zero slash one. Let's assign an IP address. Twelve dot two dot three dot two. Perfect. Perfect. No shut. All right. Okay. Perfect. So we got that in. We have our IP addresses set, right? You know, should I be able to go ahead and ping that, right? As of now, right? By default, right? Because I haven't assigned any IP addresses or did anything on the ISP 40D, right? It's a NAT device. It's a it's a layer three device, right? that what you guys learned already from a routing and switching standpoint and a firewalling standpoint, right? It has, right? It has IP, it has, it's, those interfaces now are layer three. They're not layer two, right? But there's no IP addresses, you know, assigned to them. So you can't even, it's not gonna be able to even do anything, right? But also there's an implicit deny. So traffic getting from port three, that's trying to get to port two, it's not gonna work. It's not going to work that. Listen, the mind is going to hit it. So that's the other piece, right? We need to go ahead and make sure, hey, first we're allowing traffic, but also these ports are bonded in a virtual wire pair that is doing some layer two stuff, right? So let's go ahead and do that, right? So first, let's go ahead and try to ping, see if uh, router four and router five can ping each other. So let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and do a ping, so 12.2.3.2, right? Because I'm going to go ahead and ping router 5. Nothing's happening, right? Nothing's happening. Let's take, a, let's take a deeper look, right, of how this looks on the wire, right? Let me, let me go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and start capturing packets on port 3, and I'm going to send those pings from router 4, okay? So let's go to port three. Let's capture it. So, because I want you guys to see how on the wire, how it looks, those implicit denies. Okay. So go ahead and start capturing traffic. There we go. And let's pull up router four. Cool, cool. All right. So the capture is working. It's all good. Wireshark is doing its job. All right, so now, right, if you look back at the topology, right, here's, what, here's the test I'm going to do. I'm going to see if me sending packets, right, because we're at layer three now, you know, sending packets from ISP router four from the 12.2.3.0 network on gigabit zero slash one is going to reach router five. And mind you, right, ISP 48.2, right, we want it to be 
you know, you want us to function um, between ports two and port three at layer two. We haven't we haven't done anything to it yet. So we want to see how that, of course, not having that configured, and also how that implicit deny works. Let's go back to the capture, and let's go ahead and start picking. And I want to make a quick note, right? If we take a look at it, the packet capture, you know, you see that port three um, is communicating with the other device, of course, on its on its link, on its broadcast domain, it can see, you know, of course, CDP being shot out from the Cisco device, right? So we, we this is a good verification. We can see, hey, port three is communicating with, you know, with um, the ISP router five. Let's see if those pings are gonna go across just yet. Nothing, absolutely nothing. It doesn't even cross it, right? Because again, right? Even though the the FortiGate is a layer three device, where that next gen firewall piece comes in is that it's going to go ahead and also has a that ACL inside of it, that firewall policy that says, I'm not allowing this all the way from layers one to layer layer seven. Cool. You don't meet the criteria. You hit the implicit deny. The administrator in this network hasn't allowed anything. I'm discarding that traffic at port two or within me. Okay, but well, let's go ahead and fix this, right? Let's go ahead and log in because again, router four or building one needs to be able to talk to building three. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So I gave ISP FortiGate two uh, IP address of 192.168. Um, a management address of 192.168.1.102. Let's go ahead and log in. Let's go ahead and make that change. Let's go ahead and configure a virtual wild pair. Right, and Angela, I know you remember um, the last session we had about um, the NFC4, we were talking about the layer two section as far as a virtual wild pair. And the great thing about a virtual wild pair, right? Oh, there's many use cases, right? Um, right, we're doing this, of course, right now for a layer two handoff, right? Um, we're putting in this scenario, our ISP is doing a layer two handoff, not doing any layer three manipulation, okay? so. We see, right, let's, let's take a quick look at, at this real quick, right? This tells you, right, the system information that the mode that it's running, the mode is gonna be called NAT. On the 40 gate, that means it's running at layer three. So I haven't changed it into a full, right, transparent mode or, or switch mode, right? It's doing layer three. But we can go ahead and make sure that this device is doing layer two functions because that's what we want it to do. That's what we want the ISP to do. We don't, we don't want it to manipulate traffic. So. To do that, right? We're gonna go ahead. We're gonna go ahead and have to configure a virtual wire pair, right? Just like I told you guys, the management port is the only thing that's been configured. Port two and port three has not. That meets that meets the requirements to create a virtual wire pair, right? Let's go ahead and click on create new, create a virtual wire pair, and essentially we're creating, um, you know, a layer two, um, a layer two bonding of two ports. And it's basically going to extend the two links between ISP router four and ISP router five to create one big broadcast domain, right? So let's go ahead and call it CW, CW pair one. And we're going to get the members, right? Keep in mind, right? And you can watch the last video where it talks about where we talk about virtual wire pair and, and the caveats of it. You can only have two interfaces that are part of a virtual wire pair, nothing more, okay? So we have a virtual wire pair, right? But that's not it, right? This is still a firewall. We have a virtual wire pair, it's working layer two, but we still need to go ahead and allow this traffic because this is still a firewall. It still says who's allowed, who's not allowed, okay? So go ahead and do that when you go ahead and go to policy and objects, right? Every fire, every firewall that you're going to meet, Palo Alto, uh, Cisco Firepower, um, SOFOs, they're always going to have a section that says policy and objects. And this is where your firewall policy or your ACL is going to live. Okay. So let's go ahead and allow traffic between the two, right? And we're still doing our caption. We're still doing our caption, right? And just for good measure, let's do our test again. See if we can ping. Whoops. This is the forty gate. I want the router. There we go. See if you can still ping, right? 
Whoops. Repeat. I forgot where I was at. All right. Do repeat. Still nothing. Still nothing. Dot, dot, dot. Nothing is happening. Okay? So cool. Capture still working. So let's go ahead and make this change in real time, right? Let's call this northbound again, right? Or now let's call it CWP allow. Yeah, I like that, right? And just like I told, you know, in the last session, right? Um, take a look at this section right here, right? It's pretty quirky and I like it, right? Um, the great technology about um, Fortinet and the FortiGate is, of course, when you enable some of these layer two functions, it actually is so granular and tells you which, it lets you pick which direction do you want to allow the layer two functions to act as, right? And so if you look at the virtual out here, right? I can say, oh, just allow traffic from, you know, coming from port two to go into port three, but not the other way around. Or I can just say, allow traffic from port three to go into port two, but not the other way around. Or I can say, hey, we're gonna act as a full switch port, and we're gonna add, we're gonna let traffic go in and out, right? No filter, right? And so, we're going to go ahead and same thing we did at the layer three firewall policy. We're going to call it source all, destination all, right? We're not going to mitigate it too much, right? We're going to go ahead and make sure the action is accept, right? We're not going to do that because, again, one, those interfaces, they don't have IP addresses. They're virtual wire, virtual wire um, pair, so they're working at layer two. So there's no need to have that. FortiGate's going to still have this in here. Hopefully, they change in the future, but Turn off that, okay? Um, we're not going to, uh, you know, add any security profiles or UTMs at the moment. We're just going to leave that blank. We're going to go ahead and, you know, log all sessions. Hit OK. What do we see? Traffic is passing through. Passing through. I'm able to ping. I'm able to ping five now. Right. So what the hell does that mean, right? Now I went ahead and extended, right? I extended layer two, right? Between these, you know, I extended the, uh, you know, both networks, right? Building one, building three, right? They can talk to each other now, you know, well, not quite, but of course, you know, without any routing protocols in place, they can go ahead and essentially uh, get to each other, right? So, you know, we got that working. Now the entire network can go ahead and talk, right? But again, you you guys are network engineers. You guys are cybersecurity folks. You know, um, it'll be a pain in the ass, right? Because we're we're, we're going to talk about routing now. It's going to be a pain in the ass to go ahead and put a route for each network into each router. That's tedious. I can't do that. That's Jesus. So luckily, they created this thing called routing protocols, right? And what do they do? They go ahead and, you know, minimize us doing that manual labor and say, hey, you can just configure this protocol that, you know, does the work in the background and shares routes between different layer three devices that also act as routers and go ahead and, and just go ahead and do that um, sharing of routes within themselves, right? And so that's what we're gonna configure because our goal is TC8 needs to be able to ping TC9. So if we try to ping, let me go ahead and stop this. Well, no, this, we can keep this going. If we try to ping PC9 now, right, from PC8, it shouldn't work, right? It shouldn't work. So let's go ahead and ping that. 16.1, if I can type right, 16.1.100, right? Nothing. Destination network unreachable, right? Why is it unreachable? Let's log back into FortiGate one. Let's see why. Let's get the why. Let's get the why of why this is unreachable. Okay. Take a look at it. Let's look at the dashboard. Let's look at our network section. Let's see what routing looks like. Right. Right. We got our local area network, port two. We got our WAN, port three. Of course, we got our management network. That's nothing. But I don't know how to get to the other LAN. I need a route to get there, right? I just don't know how to get there, okay? 
let's log into the other one, right? See if it looks the same, you know, if, if it knows how to get vice versa. Oops, I did password correctly. Okay. Let's look at the same thing. I'm gonna look at the routing table or the routing information base, as Cisco calls it, and Fortinet calls it. Same thing. I only know about the networks that are that are assigned to my interfaces. Nothing more. Okay. But again, our our initial goal when we started this is these these are both my buildings, right? I need building one to be able to talk to building three. Okay. The CEO, right? That's in building one needs to be able to to print a job in building three, right? So whenever he walks over, it should be able to work. Right, and so this is what we're gonna go, gonna go gonna go ahead enable and fix, right? So we're gonna go ahead and use OSPF, guys. Don't get intimidated. We're just I'm gonna go ahead and configure OSPF, real basic level, right? I'm gonna get that working. I'm not gonna talk through it. Get this going, right? We're gonna still you know we're gonna make it default parameters, make it easy, nothing too crazy. crazy get it going you guys can take notes do what do what have you but we're leaving the um, in-depth routing for a specific protocol for another section so we got OSPF running doing the all interfaces that's fine let me go back and passive interfaces and oh where we at You know what? Don't worry about it for now. Cool. And we are going to go to Lab 48.3, do the same thing, enable OSPF. Okay? All right. You're all going to be part of the backbone. Okay? Cool. Perfect. All right. Cool. Now we have to go ahead and go to our routers. Maybe OSPF there. Let's go ahead and put that out of five. Let's do it there first. Okay. Now let's go ahead and router OSPF. Okay. There we go. Oh, and we're going to do the wild cards as well. Whoops. We're going to put it in the backbone. So, area zero. Okay. There we go. All right. Go to whoops. Let's go to router five. Whoops. That's router five. Let's go to router four. Where's router four? All right. There we go. Give it a second. Got all that rolling. That going. That going. Cool. That's going. We got hello packets flowing. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Let's take a look. Let's see if any neighborships came up yet. IP, OSPF neighbors, none. Oh, 
six months. Forty eight kind of finicky sometimes. Go ahead and There we go. Perfect. Good. All right, let's go to line 48.1. What was the mic? All right, 11 dot. 11.2.3.0. Dot dot oh, okay. Dot 3.0. Dot oh. Oops. All right, we'll add another one. Same backbone. 10 out 10 out 10 out O. Oh. And apply it. Perfect. Let's check. Go. And we're also going to check. And we're going to check router five. Perfect. Cool. No adjacencies up yet. Double suit this bad boy. And 12 dots. Two dot three dot one. There we go. Okay. So, um, all right. Ah, yeah, we need a dummy. Okay, router up OSPS one. Oh, that works. Okay, and uh, oh, should be. Expect to happen. Take a look. All right, let's see if that comes up. See that rolling? Just, just in case, let's go ahead and make sure nothing's blocking it. Good. Well, 
on both ways. Perfect. Okay. Traffic's not on both ways, so we're fine. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Check router four, router five. You know what? <sighs> you probably have a you probably have a memory issue on my lab. Guys, I'm gonna switch to static routing. Let me just do that. Do so. Network 16.1.0, and the next hop is going to be, should be 14, yep, we're going to do 14.2.3.1, perfect, so I can get to both sides, perfect, all right, so we got that, all right, so let's go to router four, do the same thing. All right, IP route, oops, let's hop out of this. IP route, IP route, we're going to do 16.1.0, and next hop is going to be 12.2.3.2. Perfect. All right. And how to get to the 10 network, 10.10.10.0, 10 .10 10 25, 25.0, since it's slash 24. And the next hop is going to be that 40 gate. Perfect. All right. Perfect. And last but not least, we can go ahead and configure the default route on this 40 gate. Um, this is going to be when, and that's going to be this 11.2.3.2. Boom, we're golden. Let's go to do the same thing over here. Right. Right, we're doing the manual way, but again, just wanted to make sense for you guys for routing and switching, right? To make sure we, we the, the goal of this, I want you guys to understand that, you know, before you jump into, you know, cyber or try to be a network engineer, you got to understand, you know, routing and switching at its fundamental level, right? So let's go ahead and put in our static route here. Okay, it's going to be 14. All right. We're going to do 14.2.3.2. I'm going to put the address. Perfect. So now, right, we got our address. We got everything going, right? And so now we should be able to get to our destination, right, which is PC9. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. Okay. So it's getting through, right? It's knowing how to get through just not getting back, right? So we see it getting there, it's trying to get through, what have you, right? So, hold on. Go ahead and take a look, troubleshoot and see what's going on. And that's happening. 
take a look. Three. Traffic is being denied. Okay. All right, let's take a look. Swamp that traffic. Let's make sure oh, we got that going all over the place. Okay. All right. You know what? I'll get to do that as well. Oh. Let's just do that to good measure, just to get things working. All right, 11.2.3.2. There we go. Get things working. All right, we can troubleshoot the rest later. All right. Ten dot ten dot ten dot oh. All right. Fourteen dot two dot three dot two. All right. Let's give it a shot. Let's see if it'll work now. You know what? I think we know what's happening. So I'm going to get there. Let's turn that off. All right, let's turn off some that. Let's just get it working. The Eve, Eve and G sometimes craps out. I should have used my real 40 gates, but take a look. All right. All right. Now that's being crappy. All right. Let's do a little bit of troubleshooting. See if it's getting all the way here. Oh. Take a look. There we go. All right. Take a look, see if the packet is getting all the way there. And let's do some continuous things. See. There we go. All right, it's getting all the way over there. Perfect. And let's do another one. All right, and let's capture on the land. Take a look and see what's going on. All right, let's take a look, see if we're getting to our destination, and we are not. Yep, those pings are still gone. Okay. We're getting all the way there. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. I think I know why. Okay. Don't ever do this. <laughs> Don't ever do this in the real world. I'm just getting it going now. Would never, unless you're doing some destination map, 
do this. All right, no that. Enable. Okay, perfect. Weirdly enough. Okay, so you see if I can go through. All right. Cool. All right, so guys, I'm going to keep the same lab. I got a you know, troubleshoot, see what's going on because memory is crapping out my forty gates. But I hope this helped out. I hope this, you know, hit some of the fundamentals. In our next session, again, we're going to do a part two. I'm going to keep the same topology. I'm going to post this shortly. Um, but again, if you guys have any questions, routing, switching, firewalling, please reach out. And I hope this uh, added a little bit of value. All right, guys. Later.